Hello there, Internet. It's Michael Besaw here. And today I'm going to talk to you about three things you can do to make our country better. So if you thought that Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump were not the best choices and you're upset about that, then the second thing I'm going to talk about is for you. So I want to talk about the three things that I think that everyone, including myself, can do to make America a better place for our future. Action number one. When you come across videos, articles, and discussions about things that you think are controversial, things that you think are uh, maybe upsetting. When you come across one, especially where you, you read it and you think, that's, that's ridiculous. I think for me at least, the, the instinct is to just ignore it, not read it, not go into it, not watch that video. And I guess as far as political action goes, if you don't want to make something bigger, especially in the internet, you don't click it. You don't keep watching it. You don't share it to say, oh, this is so stupid and horrible. All right, because that just increases its volume out there. But what I think that the one number one thing that everyone needs to start doing more often and it, with, with more fervor is engaging themselves in the arguments that they don't like. Today I read that there's a, there's a school out there that is asking that the European philosophers of the past be removed from their curriculum because they're, they're a school of Asian and African studies. And so they, they think that their philosophers should not be white. I read that and I just think that's, that's ridiculous. I'm not going to get into why I think that's ridiculous right now. That's a subject of a whole other video. But my initial reaction is what matters. I think it's ridiculous. So reading the headline, I would normally just ignore it. But instead, I think that we all need to start looking at these things and really digging deep into why we disagree, why we uh, think that it's stupid, try to understand why the, the people who believe what they're believing believe what they're believing. Um, I think that we've, we've gotten so into this, this place of where we we back into our own ideological corners and shun everything out. We put blinders on. We don't want to hear it. We don't want to see it. And so when anyone presents a point of view that differs from our own, we shun it and we act like, oh, that's terrible and pointless and shut, you know, shut up. To the point where a lot of people are letting these ideological questions affect their social and, and, and emotional life in such a way that, that they can't have a real conversation with someone whose views are in any way different from their own. And I'm not talking in, in com direct opposition, I'm talking just slightly different. They hear something that's not in complete agreement with their own ideology and they are repulsed by it. It brings this sense of revulsion. And when it's your friends bringing those things, when it's your coworkers, when it's your fa your family, then we have a real problem. So I'd say Take the time, read the articles that make you uncomfortable. Watch the videos that you think are sort of ridiculous. Not, not just dumb, but of, of such an ideological difference from your own. And in a way that you can't understand right off the top of your head how that person could think that thing that they're thinking. I'm sure we all have this. We all encounter this in our lives. Take the time to dig into that. Just a bit. Understand your own reasons for believing things. And let it be okay that someone has a different opinion and make sure that you're ready to bring the reasons why you think that that, that is ridiculous in a way that might actually influence them rather than just making them uh, feel that revulsion against your disagreement. So that's number one. Dig into the articles and watch the videos that make you uncomfortable, that make you feel like that's stupid. So number two, get involved with local politics. And that, that doesn't necessarily mean you need to become uh, a city councilman or, or run for an elected position. It means when you're spending that five minutes a day to yourself with your phone in the same position that I'm in now, Look up something that has to do with lo your local political sphere. Look up who your, your representatives are 
in city council, who your aldermen are, what the bills are that are, are on the table right now, what effect they'll have. Spend five minutes every day or every other day doing this. And before you know it, you'll be extremely well informed. You'll start looking at bigger things, the county, the state, your 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 congressmen, your senators. Because politicians, especially at the at the national level, they don't come out of nowhere. We make them. And the reason that we were left with Hillary and Trump is that we haven't been paying attention to local politics in years. We haven't seen that stellar local politician. And because we haven't seen him or her, we haven't helped to promote their career. We haven't helped push them to the next level. There have been so many, I think, um, potential great congressmen, senators, and even a few presidents that have been overlooked and their careers fizzled out because we're not paying attention. And so people who are better at playing the game than they are at being um, what we need, those, those guys are getting ahead. Those guys are getting up to those levels. So if you want to stop us from having no choice, no good choice for president in 2040, you need to start looking at your councilmen here in your own city today. So that's number two. Start paying more attention to local politics. Finally, number three. Have a dream. Have a dream for yourself. Have a dream for your family. And then have a dream for America. And make sure that the three fit together. You know, follow in Martin Luther King's footsteps. Have a dream for our nation. I saw his dream played out today at my son's uh, school. My son, little half Mexican, half white kid, was playing with this little, you know, year and a half year old black girl. Reading a book together. Playing with the little pop-up numbers and, and stuff. And I stood and watched it without because he was facing away from me. I stood and watched it for a good minute. Because if there's anything I wish I could do right now today is go back and tell Dr. King, I've seen your dream. I've seen it come true. So now, 50 years later, I'm saying that you and I, we need to have our dreams. And there's, there's this less metaphysical reason for this. What I hear most is all this negativity and anger about our country. Why it's not perfect. Why it's not the best. Why it's not great. Or why it was never great. So I'm going to tell you right now, as, as a student of history, as a father and a husband, as an American as a person who descended from uh, Irish and Scottish and Cherokee and Choctaw, as a soldier who's been to other places, there's never been a better place than the United States. I mean, there's never been a place that has done more good for more people all over the world than the United States. So no, it doesn't have a perfect history, but no one does. And our future, makes everyone else's future better. But we might lose that. We might lose that potential. We might lose that legacy if our nation doesn't continually dream itself into a better future. And that would be tragic. So that's my three things that you can do right now, starting today, to make America better, to make the world better. Engage yourself in the arguments you don't find comfortable. Involve yourself in local politics. Keep yourself informed. Have your own dream for the future and make sure you're pushing toward it. Make sure other people understand it and that they should have a dream too. So what do you think is at least one thing you can do that everyone can do right now to make America a better place? Go ahead and Put it in the comment section. Let's talk about it. Let's discuss it. If you like this video, click like below. If you want to see more of this content, go ahead and click that subscribe button. I have two series right now. One is called Car Lectures. It's me talking to my son who's in the back seat of my car. The other series is called Stupid Should Hurt because I think stupid should hurt and it doesn't and that's why there's so much of it. 
So click like, subscribe, be safe, and I'll see you soon.